If you are a dispatcher or use a dispatching service, you need to listen to this because you now may be breaking the oh, law. No. So as of Friday, June 16th, the FMCSA has finally legally described what it means to be a dispatcher. They essentially listed out definitions and protocols. And now if you are not following these things, you are breaking the law or operating illegally. This article is pretty good and slightly concise, but I'll try to make it more concise. FMCSA's final ruling on truck brokerage definitions is now in fact. So basically the FMCSA here is defining what a broker, a bona fide agent, and also a dispatcher is. So final ruling is designed to help stop illegal brokers and dispatchers from operating. So this is when they made it. This guy's going over what the definition is. So the, this final guidance arms freight brokers and entities operating as bona fide agents or dispatch services in the trucking industry with information needed to help make appropriate decisions for their operations, said FMCSA Administrator Robin Hutchison. It also helps clarify for regulated carriers whether they should work with entities that do not have broker authority and associated financial responsibility. So basically a lot of people have seen dispatching as sort of a workaround to not have broker authority. So when you don't have broker authority, you don't have the surety bond associated with the not paying for the load. And you're kind of just a middleman with no liability because it was not defined prior to this. Basically where the guidance comes into play is when a carrier books a load with an entity that it is actually a brokerage, which I don't think many carriers would check. And that when a shipper assigns the freight that there's an actual liable person that they're dealing with that is not a dispatcher because if a shipper gave a dispatcher freight before this it would have been pretty easy for the dispatcher to kind of just skirt by and not really have any liability for the freight and it was also very difficult for insurance companies to actually collect the money when there was a claim in the event of a claim so i'm skipping to later in the article and then we'll come back but these are basically the requirements for a dispatcher to operate legally now a dispatcher is not legally defined by the fmcsa but this is what is required to not need broker authority which means you can be a dispatcher so the dispatch service has a written legal contract relationship with motor carrier that clearly reflects the motor carrier is appointing the dispatch service as a licensed agent for the motor carrier. This is often a long time contractual relationship. The written legal contract should specify the insurance and liability responsibilities of the dispatch service and the motor carrier. Two, the dispatch service complies with all state licensing requirements if applicable. Three, the dispatch service goes through a broker to arrange for the transportation of shipments for the motor carrier and does not see or solicit shippers for freight. I think this point is very important here because it explicitly defines that it has to be through a broker. So now if you're dispatching a carrier, it has to be through a broker. Now I've seen this before where a dispatcher, you can actually get like a local customer and then just because you have the contract that allows you to sign for the carrier, that you can basically act as a carrier going forward from there because you have signing rights. So you could pick up shippers as customers before now it is legally defined that you have to, as a dispatcher, only book your loads with brokers. All of your income, all of your loads, now have to come from a broker with a brokerage authority. So back in the article here, uh, point four, the dispatch service does not provide billing or accept compensation from the broker, third party logistics company or factoring company, but instead receives compensation from the motor carriers based upon predetermined written legal contractual agreements. The dispatch service is not an intermediary or involved in the financial transaction between a broker and a motor carrier. Number six, the dispatch service is an IRS 1099 recipient from the motor motor carrier or a W-2 employee of the motor carrier as specified in the legal contract agreement. The dispatch service discloses that they are a dispatch service operating under an agreement with a specific motor carrier and the shipment is arranged for that motor carrier only. So this is extremely important, important also this part number seven, because if you are a carrier, maybe not as much, but for a broker or a shipper, primarily for brokers, a lot of times when you book a load with a dispatcher, you'll see that they'll say, yeah, I got a carrier, I got a carrier they're ready to go and then the carrier that ends up doing it is a totally different carrier they're not supposed to be soliciting trucks post getting the load and now it is legally defined by the fmcsa in this point number seven here number eight the dispatch service does not subsequently assign or arrange for the load to be carried or moved by another motor carrier like i said before a dispatch service does not provide their services for a motor carrier unless that motor carrier specifically appointed the dispatch service as their agent in accordance with the 
aforementioned requirements. This is basically just reiterating like point one and then following the other points. So a factor is indicating that a broker authority is required. First one is that the dispatch service interacts with or negotiates any shipments of freight directly with the shipper. This is like the point earlier. Dispatchers cannot work with shippers. The dispatch service accepts or takes compensation for a load from the broker or factory company is involved in any monetary transaction between any of those entities. Again, the dispatcher cannot receive money from the broker. The dispatch service arranges for a shipment of freight for a motor carrier and there is no written legal contract with the motor carrier that meets the section IV1 of the guidance above. Again, you need to have a contract with the carrier in order to dispatch. If the dispatch service accepts a shipment without a truck slash carrier, then attempts to find a truck slash carrier to move the shipment. If the dispatch service engages in allocation of traffic by accepting a shipment that could be transported by more than one carrier in which it is agreed, in with which it has agreements and signs to it to be one of those carriers. Number six, the dispatch service is a named party on the ship contract. You cannot work directly with a shipper. So it's like, if you're on the contract, as the dispatcher or as your company, the dispatch service, you have to be a brokerage then. So you have to have brokerage authority to sign a shipping contract. Number seven, the dispatch service is soliciting to the open market of carriers for the purposes of transporting a freight shipment. So really what this is trying to prevent is essentially a dispatcher. So if I'm a dispatcher, I could go on the load board, book a load with maybe a carrier's number that I had from before. And then after I booked the load, look for a carrier to cover the load. So then it was almost like legal double brokering, which is now gonna be over. So, well, according to the rules, it's gonna be over. Now, I don't really know where this goes from here because now it has been legally defined. So I'm not entirely sure if this is actually going to solve the problems because I do still think that if you're a dispatcher kind of acting in bad faith, it's still going to be pretty easy to not follow these rules and then just kind of abandon ship if something were to go wrong, like a larger claim. So with that being said, like obviously dispatching is not dead from this, but it does make it a lot more difficult to make more money. And the rest of the article here kind of goes into how this is going to basically kill dispatching and like dispatching services won't be able to operate anymore. They definitely will be able to continue to operate in the way that they're supposed to operate, but uh, the double brokering will be harder, but not really because at the end of the day, like how many brokers are actually going to go back and check? And I guess maybe the law on this case, if you double broker something via being a dispatch service, like book a load, and you don't have a carrier actually ready for the load or you sign a different carrier, then what are you gonna do? It's kind of like, I don't know specifically from this how much liability the dispatcher actually holds because it wouldn't be defined in the dispatcher carrier agreement. So really all you would have is the dispatcher carrier agreement and the Raycon as well as the broker carrier agreement that the dispatcher would sign on behalf of the carrier. But I still just think that because the FMCSA doesn't define what a dispatcher is, so it doesn't have anything that they need to do. It just has what it isn't. And then if you're just operating as a dispatcher as you want to operate and something goes wrong, you can still just do the same things you did before. And it's not like they're requiring dispatchers to have surety bonds or extra insurance, for instance, because it's not defined. So so I think that the exuberance in this article is, I don't think much is gonna change at all from the definitions here. Just my opinion. What are you gonna do? Like sue the Ukrainian company that dispatched and double brokered? Like you're not gonna find these people. They're gonna be gone. Holding accountable to dispatchers, it doesn't really occur here. Now, if you're a shipper, I think that the solicitation of shippers becomes more difficult, but I do think that the main practice of actually just double brokering loads or technically not double brokering, but double brokering through being a dispatcher is still going to continue because I think that it's going to be really easy to call a broker, say you got a carrier, sign on behalf of that carrier, Raycon is all done. Then that dispatcher has all day to look for another carrier. Now, unless the shippers actually check that the motor carrier matches what's on the Raycon, then it's not going to happen. And that never happens. So I'm not a dispatcher. I don't do any dispatching. I'm not trying to justify the negative practices, but I I don't think this solves the problem. So I think going forward, it's going to be the same practices besides dispatchers working directly with shippers, which does not happen very often anyway. So yeah, I think in my opinion, if you were to actually make this work well, you would have actually defined what a dispatcher is, not just defined what you need to do or not just define what you need to have to be a freight broker or what if you do X, Y, Z thing, then you have to be a freight broker because you could just be a dispatcher, not get the insurance, not get the authority, take off without any liability and it's still all gonna be the same. So that's my opinion. In the beginning of the article, I thought maybe dispatching would be harder, but uh, after this, I do not think it will be harder. And I 
think that from you know my standpoint, I'm a broker and a carrier working with other carriers. So that's going to be the same uh, situation. So let me know what you think. I'll leave a link for the article in the description. And thanks so much for listening.